I'm putting this little vlog out on YouTube, especially for this uh, very unusual Anzac Day when so many veterans and others are in isolation lockdown <clears throat> because of the sensible decision to flatten the hump, to restrict the spread of COVID-19. So without further ado, I will start with what is almost obligatory among folk singers here and in the British Isles. Eric Bogle's sensational World War song, The Band Played Waltz in Matilda. Oh, when I was a young man, I carried my pack and lived the free life of a rover. From the Murray's Green Basin to the dusty outback. I won't my Matilda all over. Then in 1915, my country said, Son, it's time you stop rambling, there's a war to be won. So they gave me a tin hat and gave me a gun. And they sent me away to the war. And the band played waltzing Matilda As we sailed from Albany And amid all the tears The flag waving and cheers We sailed off to Gallipoli Well I remember that terrible day when the blood stained the sand and the water And how in that hell that they called Suvla Bay We were butchered like lambs at the slaughter Johnny Turk, he was ready, he primed himself well He showered us with bullets and drained us with shells and in five minutes flat we were all blown to hell nearly blew us back home to australia but the band played waltzing matilda as we stopped to bury our slain we buried ours and the Turks buried theirs Then it started all over again Those who were living just tried to survive In that mad world of blood, death and fire And for ten weary weeks I kept myself alive while the corpses around me piled higher Then a big Turkish shell knocked me ass overhead And when I woke up in my hospital bed So what it had done and I wished I was dead Never knew there were worse things than dying Waltzing Matilda All around the great bush far and near For a hump tent and pegs A man needs both legs No more waltzing Matilda for me They collected the wounded The crippled and maimed And they shipped us back home to Australia The legless, the armless, the blind and the maimed And the proud wounded heroes of Suvla And as our ship pulled into Circular Quay I looked at the place where me legs used to be And thank Christ there was nobody waiting for me To 
grieve and to all and to pity. And the band played waltzing Matilda as they carried us down the gangway. But nobody cheered, they just stood there and stared. And they turned all their faces away Now every April I sit on my porch And I watch the parade pass before me I see my old comrades, how proudly they march we're living their dreams of past glory I see the old men all twisted and sore The forgotten heroes of a forgotten war And the young people ask what are they marching for and I ask myself the same question And the band plays waltzing Matilda And the diggers still answer the call But year after year their numbers get fewer Someday no one will march there at all In the early 1950s, an epidemic swept across the British Isles, a particularly virulent strain of measles which infected over a million people. I think I caught it at kindergarten, but mum and dad were immune because they had had it as children. I only just survived mine, 200,000 others who perished during that miserable summer lay testament as to just how serious this was. The poem's called Measles and it should serve, us to rem serve to remind us that we can never hide from when Mother Nature turns on us. That was the year the steam trains were being placed by diesels. The year was 1952, the year I got the measles in the lower half of England and in the south of Wales. About a million were infected in cities, hills and dales. I was just a little boy. I hadn't yet reached four. I was walking with my family and my legs and arms felt sore. My father picked me up because I was making such a fuss. He took me down to Cheriton Road and we went home on the bus. By the time we reached our home, I was in an awful way had a dreadful headache, I remember to this day. Dad put me in the spare room, which was next to their own. My temperature began to spike. Mum thought that I was gone. She went next door to Mrs Green because she had a phone to ring our family doctor, but they said he couldn't come. They said to give me aspirin. That's all that they could do. And give me lots of water and try and keep me cool. For three days that I lay there, hallucinating bad, I lay there in a sweaty mist, while my poor mum and dad were anxious every minute, expecting me to die. But on the Wednesday afternoon, I had the strength to cry. I gradually got stronger until I sat up in my bed. I still had an awful rash and that aching in my head. No doctor, locum, medic, nurse came in those dreadful days. They were all too busy signing out all those who passed away. So when I hear somebody say, why didn't they vaccinate? We didn't have a vaccine till 1968. Since then, the world's a better place. Children need not go from measles, scarlet fever, whooping cough or polio. All those children need not suffer. Their lives, please, let us spare. 
If you want to know about it, just ask me. I was there. My mother used to sing this song to me when I was young. I don't know where she learned it, probably at school. I'm using the tune she sang, not the more popular version. So here's his lovely old ballad, The Minstrel Boy. The minstrel boy to the war is gone in the ranks of death you'll find him his father's sword he had girded on and his wild harp slung behind him land of song said the warrior but the wall the world betray thee One sword at least Thy right to shall guard One faithful heart shall praise thee The minstrel fell But the foeman's chain could not bring that soul under The harp he loved never spoke again For he tore its strings asunder And said no change shall sully thee the soul of love and bravery My songs were made for the pure and free They shall never sound in slavery The minstrel boy to the war is gone in the ranks of death you'll find him His father's sword he had girded on And his wild harp slung behind him This next is a love poem I wrote about another bloke. I made friends with a New Zealander I met in London and we had a lot of laughs together. We were both as masculine as we could get, but I loved Bob. He was just a beaut bloke. The poem's just called Wob. I met him in a London flat. We were both down on our ends. I moved in and helped with the rent bread and we soon became the best of friends. I got myself a job in Fleet Street and Wally served behind a bar. Soon we scraped enough together and set off to buy a car. Down behind Australia House there, found two chicks just like ourselves. They had a battered V-dub combi they'd been trying hard to sell. One of them, like Wall, was a Kiwi, the other an Aussie, just like me. We struck it off, we bought that combi, <laughs> then we invited them for tea. Within a week they moved their gear in. Neither of them had a lot. Summer was approaching quickly, but London doesn't get too hot. On a morning, 1st of July, we packed our things into the van my guitar, sleeping bag and banjo. We stuffed them in as best we can. Headed down the road to Dover, just the girls and Wall and me. Caught the morning channel ferry across that little bit of sea. Motored down through France to Munich, Austria and Italy. Yugoslavia, on to Athens. It got hot and so did we. Out to Eos in the Aegean. Nights on beaches on our own. Spent them drinking Retsina, making love and getting stoned. October came. The girls got restless. They left on the evening tide. 
Wall and I drove back to England. We'd only been out for the ride. It's now 46 years later and I haven't seen those friends for years. Even now as I recall them, I've got no regrets or sadness nor tears. No regrets, just memories when my foot was to the floor and my mind often wanders back to 1974. <laughs> okay, so we're caught up in this COVID-19 pandemic and we've been told to socially isolate from each other as much as possible. I don't mind. I have a lovely house, garden and wife. Plenty to do and although I'm getting on, I have other factors which make me higher risk. But I'm ready if it takes me. But in the meantime, I want to pay tribute to all the medical people, the police, the nurses, the doctors, the essential service providers and, and our politicians who, whatever we may have thought of them before, have stepped up to the plate and are, with no exceptions, showing the leadership which Australians just do when called on. It's another poem called Isolation. I'm sick of living in this house. Sick, sick, sick. Forced to live in quarantine because of this pandemic. Seems like another lifetime I went downtown on the train. I'm going to say it'll be eight weeks or more till I'll do it again. I'm restricted to backyard and house. At least that's what I'm told. It seems to be my punishment for being bloody old. My dog, he thinks it stinks because I can't take him for a walk. And I'm so bored, I even took the budgie how to talk. The Duchess shops just once a week down at our local Coles to buy the groceries and queue up to get some toilet rolls. I reckon I'm stir crazy of going balmy in the head. But at least I have my veggie patch and a TV in my shed. But when I think about it, I really shouldn't whinge. I'm staying fit and healthy, and I've got Netflix to binge. The grandkids cannot visit with their kisses and their laughter. But we've got FaceTime to see them, and <laughs> not tidy the house after. It's pretty good when you compare us with the other lands on Earth. It's not too awful living here, right here in dear old Perth. A good and caring government to flatten our curve or hump. And unlike the United States, <laughs> at least we've not got Trump. Now, and finally the chap in this next clip is probably my oldest friend. On that day in February 1957, when I started school in Medina, Western Australia, Mr Curtis grabbed me by the shoulder, plonked me down at a desk next to this boy and said, This is Don Dowling. Don, look after this little pommy kid. He did look after me too and we became good friends, which extended to his parents befriending mine. Our lives were always intertwined somehow and I even proudly took his lovely sister to the drive-in once. Our parents lived in the same seniors village in Busselton. We individually developed a passion for folk music. Don became a United Church pastor and was, at one time, chaplain of the school my son attended. Now he's retired to Dunsborough, near Busselton on Geograph Bay, south of Perth, where I live. Like so many other Australian retirees, he become a grey nomad. And here he bewails the fact that during this regional lockdown, he and his wife cannot get out of their caravan to enjoy Australia to the max. But, with his eternal optimism, he says, our day will come.
Our day will come One day we'll travel again Our day will come One day we'll drive again Then we will take our van away The caramel way Soon we will be out on the road again, new places to see, meeting with friends again. Until this time comes around, I fear we'll fix our gear and dream. will dream then we will take our vans away the caramel